Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Hold on. I gotta remove the glittery raspberries. Well, you can't kick off the new year without a little glitz and glam, mm. Rachel. It is a new year. Happy New Year. New Year, new you. We made it. The haters doubted. And that's delicious. But here we are. Here we are. So this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today we're talking about how to start your journey to millionaire status in 2024. And I believe you can get there. That's right. Absolutely. It's attainable. We all can do this. Even in today's economy, Rachel, for I sure. still think it's attainable for so many people out there that have lost hope. We're going to talk about the possibilities while sipping on something sparkly. I kind of want to take these raspberries off. Yeah, they're so to. glittery, they're and I feel like I'm going to get it all over my face, and then I'll have glitter on my face for the rest of my life. And your daughter will say thanks. Dad. I'll go to the grave with glitter <laughs> on my face. So uh, what is this? We are sipping. Give us, give us the French. Okay, I listened to the French pronunciation because I don't want to offend our French listeners, which I'm sure there's at there's least so many <laughs> dozens of you, if we're lucky. It's called Ekir Royal. Kia. Ekir. Ekir. Kia. It's crazy. Crazy. There you go. We're going to give you the rating, reveal the cost <gasps> per glass, and give you the recipe at the end of the episode. So stick around. You don't want to miss that. That's right. Um, so, George, there's many moments in history that you can remember where you were, you know? Yeah. You think about um, Y2K, September 11th. Like, you can go through these moments in our life. Do you remember? I, I remember where I was because I was watching it live. And I remember the next day at school talking about it in the cafeteria when the very first winner of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire yes. was crowned. Because this show with Regis Filmin was a huge, we watched it. Everyone watched it. I mean, it was such a big deal. It was, was must-see TV. And it's before DVR and all that. Like, you had to be live. I mean, it was a huge show. I still can hear the theme music. Dun, 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 dun. dun, dun. Oh, it's so... <laughs> it's a core it memory. It is so good. And they're all... Do, 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 and they're, like, having to, you know, figure out who's going to be playing. And I remember when the first guy won. Yeah, that's right. This is... So let me paint the scene, Rachel. Okay. It's 1999. 31-year-old IRS agent, John Carpenter. He was 31? He was 31. What are we doing with our lives? <laughs> He's sitting across from Regis Philbin, RIP to the king. One question left between him and the million-dollar prize. This is an epic moment. Uh, I mean, the fact he's even gotten up there, I think only like two other people I yeah. think had made it there. It's difficult. I mean, we are all on the edge of our couches. Can I tell you the question, the million-dollar question? Here Go. it was. Okay. Which of these U.S. presidents appeared on the television series Laugh-In? I would have been like, and I lost a million dollars. Bill Clinton? I don't know. <laughs> a, Lyndon Johnson, B, Richard Nixon, C, Jimmy Carter, or D, Gerald Ford. That's a tough one. Those I all forgot, feel the same to me. I'm going to be honest. I forgot <laughs> Gerald Ford was ever president. I, I feel like all those presidents all, <laughs> they're jumbled in my head. I don't know which I would have even guessed. I still don't know what the right Wait, answer is. I still don't even know. Hold on. I want to I wanna see which one I would have guessed. I would have said Richard Nixon. I don't know why. I was going to go Carter. I feel like Carter, he's a real, you know, affable guy. I yeah. could see him on a comedy show called Laugh-In. Okay, what was the Does answer? Does anyone know the answer? Yeah, Nixon. Oh, it was? You I'm won a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a millionaire. But he did the GOAT. It was such a gangster it. moment. The GOAT. So he asked to moment. use one of his lifelines to call his parents, the only lifeline he even used. And uh, this is where you could help with the question, call, phone a friend, ask the audience. So he calls 50, his dad. 15. Here's the direct quote. He said, uh, I don't actually need your help. I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to win the million dollars. Mic drop moment. And everyone freaked out. It was unbelievable. What a, can I say bad A? Yeah. Bad A yeah, move. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what a bad A move. Yeah, I want You're everyone. You're so smart that like. You use a lifeline just to tell somebody you're about to be a millionaire? It transcends pretentiousness. Like, I don't even care. <laughs> That's a level of confidence that we oh, could only aspire because to. because it's not pretentious in lifestyle. It's pretentious right here. And people right here all day. It was before the flex existed, and this man did it. That's unbelievable. So we share that story to tell you that we want everyone to walk into 2024 with that John Carpenter energy. Yes, channel his confidence. That you will become a millionaire. No game it show required. can Happen, yes, and you can do it without a game show for sure. I want you and to call your parents and say, "I'm going to be a millionaire." Period. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Hang Love up. Love you. Thanks, Regis. Thanks, Regis. Because here's the deal: it it is possible for everyone, and we our jobs 
besides just sipping on cocktails and talking to you all. Which is a job, kids, it, if you're ever <laughs> it is a wondering, job. Do you, are their dream jobs still out there? Uh, that we talk to people all the time about their money, and we see the math. We see how there is a road that is possible for anyone to walk down. It takes time. And the way we teach how to become a millionaire, it does. it's slower than like the get rich quick. But we talk about being a net worth millionaire, and that is what you own minus what you owe. So, you know, let's say you um, own, a, you know, $500,000 in assets from savings, your house. I mean, you put everything together, but you owe $100,000 on your house. That means your net worth is $400,000. So when we talk about being a millionaire, we're assuming it's your net worth. So it may not be a million dollars cash in the bank, but it could be equity in your home. Everything added up in your life minus what you owe equals a million dollars. And can I also say this is not Rachel and George's opinion on what net worth is. This is just the financial definition, okay? Do by people accounting. Mad at our de- people get mad at oh, us. Oh, yeah. They, say, they get we, mad at our net worth. Yeah, they say you can't count a house in your net worth. You can't count the equity. You uh, can't count retirement. Because it's not like liquid. In their mind, if it's not liquid and if it's not cash flowing. Oh, I'm so sad I for know. those people. Come on. You can it's do okay, this. Because you technically could sell your house and cash out the equity. Like, it counts. And the other we count it. piece of this equation, Rachel, is if yeah. you have nothing on the O side and it's all things you own, that's right. That means you're debt free and it only helps you what a uh, grow that wealth. What so. a beaut. I think Regis would be proud. I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what's crazy is that a lot of people don't feel like they can become a millionaire. Someone stole their hope at some point. I know. Rachel. So, according to a 2023 survey commissioned by Clever. Real estate, 52% of Americans report their net worth is less than $30,000. Ouch. 25% of Americans say their net worth is zero or negative. Oof. So again, a lot of people feel like we, there's no way we can make it because of where we are right now. But there's good news, George. There's a plan. That's right. A plan and in place. I remember being there, Rachel. This was me not long ago. Back in yeah. 2013, I had $40,000 in debt. I had a negative net worth. And I didn't think 10 years later that I was going to be here Mm -hmm. hanging out with the Rachel Cruz talking about how to become a millionaire. But I went from broke to millionaire over a decade and there was no get rich quick. Mm -hmm. I'm a W-2 employee at Ramsey the whole time. And I was working entry level jobs for many years and I grew my income. I got married and we had dual incomes and we paid off our house. We invested in our 401ks over many years. And when you add those up, you go, oh, my gosh, we're millionaires. That's a cool milestone to achieve. Yeah. Oh, um, I love it. No, and I so I just great. want to let people know, even if you have a negative net worth today, you're not just born into money. And if you're not, you'll never be a millionaire. It's definitely possible. Yeah. And what I love, too, is we've done so much study and research on millionaires here at Ramsey that what's beautiful is we see, like, we see all the stats around it. So 79% of millionaires today in America did not receive any inheritance from their parents or other family members. The top five careers for millionaires are engineer, accountant, teacher, management, and attorney. Eight out of 10 invest in their 401k. That was the vehicle they said, this is what got me there. Yeah, and so, you know, it is possible. And there's 24.5 million millionaires in the U.S. today. That's more than I thought. I know, it is a lot. And and again, these are are normal people. This isn't like Jay-Z and Beyonce and T-Swift, which we love them. But you're picturing billionaires. We're not talking private jets. Yeah, 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 yes. I mean, just like a millionaire status... Yeah, I think it's great. But tell me this, George. So you said that. You said it's a cool milestone to reach. Um, do you – I don't know. And we could disagree on this, and I'm totally fine with Ooh, that. Ooh, they love a disagreement. I know. I'm totally fine with it. There are people out there, especially in the money space, that are like, that should be a target goal. You should work to become a net worth millionaire, to become a millionaire. That should be a goal of yours. Go, 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 go. I always find it weird to have a specific number – for a goal like that. I don't know why. Like for me, a goal is more what's maybe maybe it's something you're going to buy or purchase or I guess a number in retirement, but not even that. Like, I don't know. It just feels a little weird to me to say like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go so hard after this goal to be a millionaire. That's my only goal. Because the truth is to me, it's the habits that you have day in and day out that should be more of the goals, right? I should learn to live on less than I make. I should learn how to be content I should learn to be able to say no. I should like these are the things that help become a millionaire. True. And there's something about like I'm gonna just try to reach that, but maybe that's just my personality. I don't know. Yeah, it just feels like. Well, a, I see where you're coming from. I don't know. There's like a. I don't it's know, a fun it's... milestone to aim at, but the idea of like I need to have a million dollar net worth 
it's it's not like, well, that's the ticket to this thing. Right. You know, it's it's in your house. It's in retirement. It's not like you have a million dollars cash in the bank and you're retiring. Right. So right. So it, I guess in my head, I'm like, yeah, to become it's a, a millionaire, byproduct. That's right. That's right. It's, it's a great byproduct. It's the result of being wise with money. But I feel like being wise with money in your decision making should be more of the goal than like a specific like. Well, number. when you chase a number, sense. the target always moves. When you get to a yeah. million, it becomes, well, uh, I want to get two million. Yeah, and I think if you're you obsessed million. with it, yeah, it's probably a little bit like, It can oh. become unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. As we were planning for this episode, that's what I thought about. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Uh, and it's a good expectation because being a millionaire is not, it's not all glitz and glam. Your lifestyle may not change drastically. Does it give you more options and more margin, hopefully? Absolutely. If you're mm-hmm. debt-free and you're a millionaire with a paid-for house— your income is all yours. We always say your greatest wealth building tool is your income. So is it a better life? Yes. Am I, you know, renting out private jets all the time? No. Yes, you are, George. You know me, Rachel. I know you. I'm a Southwest guy. High roller. I love Southwest. They've they've hurt me in the past, but I'm I'm not gonna let that and I don't, taint me. Some people just can't take it. Take, can't take the no seat assignments. Oh. I love it. I think every man for himself. Wow. Or woman. It's 2024, Rachel. Don't forget. I am. I okay. Yes. So, what what kind of life do you think people expect a millionaire to live? Like, what comes to people's minds as you talk to them? Because I think there's sort of misnomers when it comes to what their yeah. life is like. I mean, I think there's like the what extreme their careers side like. where that you automatically a million. Yeah, you're just like, oh, nice cars and big houses and fancy vacations, and like you go there so quickly. But I also know we like have a dose of reality these days, not to be Debbie Downer on it, but I've seen so many memes <laughs> where it's like what I thought a million dollars would buy me. And it's like this mansion. And then it's like, actually, and then it's like this crappy house in the middle of LA. <laughs> and it's like, that's- It's a condo like, in LA. So I do feel like our listeners and viewers, we have a healthy dose of it, of like truly reality. Because it does not get you what it used to, right? I mean, that's the truth well, that's, of it. That's the comment I get a lot. And Not th- that we're against becoming it. This is the goal of the episode. We want you to, yes. to do this. No, but to your point. Because you're being wise with money. But it's, yeah, yeah, It just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't go as far as it used to. I see this a lot in the comment section on YouTube. Why do I hang out there, Rachel? I don't know. I don't know. That I need and help. then the other place, which is where dreams go to die. Where? And I've never been. Reddit? Yep. I stay away from it. I think but it's I hilariously it's honest. Winston read it like a month ago and was like, babe, do you know there's like Reddit threads on like a lot of Ramsey stuff? And I was like, about me? He's like, maybe. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh, no. I don't want to know. No, you stay away. But Let Winston handle it. Apparently someone stuck up for me in my minivan. Some girl, so thank you. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now we're all going to go search for that thread. Thank you, Rachel. No. <laughs> That's great. But yeah, I think to your point, there's a lot of, you know, I'm going to call them hope stealers, like Dave Ramsey says, where they're in the comment section going, a million dollars is nothing today. I'm like, yeah. Easier for you to say, bro. Like, I think a million dollars is still a whole lot of money. And it's much better than $4,000. Yeah. Well, and it's usually, <laughs> can I, yeah, let's be like, honest, Rachel. Usually those kinds of comments are coming from broke people who just have the hope. They just need a hug. Yeah. They've been hurt. They don't think it's hope is out there for yeah. them. And so truly when I see them, I just want to give a little troll hug through the comment section. I know. And it is hard. Yeah. And I think it's like, oh, my gosh, this dose of how expensive life is. But also, if that's where you stay in that mindset, then you're not going to change or do anything different. And we want you to build great habits that will cause you to do well financially because it's great. And you can change your family tree, help other people. I mean, there's a lot of things money can do, which is great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about our current lifestyle as millionaires because I think it might surprise people. Yeah. Hit me with one thing that you think might surprise people. Uh, We still contribute to... Our 401k, we do a backdoor Roth and we invest, we save, we save a lot of our income. We save a lot. We don't spend, we don't spend a lot. That's good. And Relatively, you also have like the we, margin. We looked back, yeah, on our, yeah, on our like year in 2023. And I thought, hmm, should I go get a nice purse? Like, I feel like there's a lot in our retirement accounts. But Winston and I, it is a thing for us because of. Dave and like our, right, my family and all of that, which is such a gift and wonderful. But there's something about the dignity of us, regardless of what uh, Dave has done, is going to do anything in the future. 
that like if we were to be plucked out of the if we were to be shunned from the Ramses, kicked out of the family, that like Winston and the crew, like we would still be doing well. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's kind of that like you wouldn't be insulated. living like Schitt's Creek lifestyle. Yeah, like like we kind of have an insulated view of like we want our family to do well on our own, on our own caliber. You know, does that make sense? Absolutely. So there's th- so I'm like, yeah, we do. I mean, I feel like every yeah, I mean it's it's a, everything is a percentage of our world whether we take a vacation or what it is. Like I don't know, we just don't we're not extravagant people, I would say, except for the Tesla. That's the one thing. But hey, well, plug her in, let, plug her in. Let's talk about cars because this is an interesting one. Uh, my wife and I, we still buy and drive used cars. And I just bought mm. the most expensive car of my life. And it was still what? a used car. Oh, wow, George. But M- More than the Tesla? More than the Tesla. Because really? my Tesla's 10 years old. That was okay. not a, you know, okay. you know, people spend more on a Kia Forte these days than what my Tesla costs. So mm. it, that wasn't that extravagant. Mm. Um, but it still hurt to see the depreciation from the MSRP value from when these cars were brand new to what they are today. And oh, so yeah. th- for that reason... I just, my stomach couldn't handle it. Yeah. And that's at us having the margin. We, You know, we say to people, hey, don't buy new cars until your net worth millionaire because yep. you can't stomach the hit on depreciation as far as your net worth goes. Yes. And I still buy used cars because I think it was a smart consumer choice for our family. Yeah, I think it's great. And it's still a beautiful car. And so people out there, you know, making way less with lower net worths are still buying Brand luxury new, new cars right, that they right. can't afford. It's yep. keeping them in cycles of payment. So that yep. might surprise people. Yeah, I And I still that. coupon. You know me. Uh, I love a Kirkland coupon. King. You love a good coupon. I love a deal. I love to save. And I still take the time to research deals and find yep. the coupon. Yep. Even if it saves 50 cents or a dollar, it's just wired in me. 50 cents? Really, George? Sometimes. I'll clip it on the Target app. I don't know? do that. I'm sorry. Call me a snob. Rachel doesn't even know that you can scan items in the Target app. I don't do the 50 savings. cent save. I don't. But I will shop all my, all my clothes. Amazon. Amazon, J. Crew, Old Navy, Target, all day, every day. That's why I said with a few nicer pieces thrown in there, you know. Uh, that's your that's your strategy. As, um, I have a, I have like yes, two nice purses, but I don't not close. We got Abercrombie. We got Abercrombie. Whoa! I don't know. Abercrombie is coming uh, back, guys. It is back, and it is fabulous. It's so great. In my mind, there's still a cardboard cutout I got of a shirtless my, I got guy. My, I got my I got my prop. I got my cheering section back there. I haven't walked in an Abercrombie in probably twenty years. Me neither. But there is a thing called www.abercrombie.com. I wouldn't darken the doors of the digital site, Rachel. What? George, I just can't do it. Fantastic. I'm scared they're going to spray me with fragrance through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's too risky. It is risky. It's so aggressive. Well, when it first came out, I thought, oh, God, are we going back to like, am I going to be a 15-year-old? There you go. This but is no. millionaire shop at Abercrombie. It's fantastic. There's your life that's, hack. That's mine. That's, that's mine. good. Anyways, yeah. we both still get up. We go to work. Not much bills. has changed. It's just pay easier. Comcast. It's just easier to pay the bills. Less stress. We get to do more fun things. Yeah. You know, nicer yeah. vacations, upgrading things. And sure. more than 50% of millionaires live in a neighborhood where the average household income is below 75000 a year. Yep. And six out of 10 millionaires live in a house valued under $500,000. So they're not necessarily living in million-dollar houses. <clears throat> that's right. That's right. And I think it's important to ask yourself, okay— you know, why is this important? And I think we could we could bucket it under like why becoming a millionaire, right? Is important. Or or again, I like to bucket it more like why why am I choosing to be wise with my money? Why am I choosing to be smart that long term I'm gonna win? And so the motivation behind all of this I think is really important, George, because we said it earlier, but it's true. It's it's not like all your problems disappear if you have a million dollar net worth. That's not true. But it's, it is helpful, right? You have options. You have choices in life. So it's definitely helpful, but it doesn't erase who you are. Like, you are still that same person. Well, we always say, you go with you. And so if you're a miserable yes. person when you're broke, you're just going to be miserable when you're rich. Yes, it so just magnifies who I you like are. I like focusing on identity as a big part of it, is who do who do I want to become? Who do we want to become as a family? Yes. And part of that becomes we want to be people who don't have payments, who can give more generously, yep. who can retire with dignity and work when we want to versus because we have to. Yes. And so that just the is the kind of, of questions you should be asking. That's right. That's right. Versus that's so having good. some specific net worth goal. That's so good. I love it. Okay. So if you're out there and you have consumer debt and you're thinking, okay, well, I have car payments. I have credit card debt. Uh, your first step towards becoming a millionaire really is to get out of debt. It is to release your income 
from going to banks to going to yourself and paying yourself and investing that money. Like that is one of the biggest, I think, hurdles for people is it's hard to build wealth when you have all these payments. And so when you don't have any payments and you are debt free, it's amazing what happens. Your your income is your largest wealth building tool. And that's been said around here for decades, but it really is mathematically so true. When you have all of your income, you can do so much and let it work for you versus working for the bank. That's right. And on that net worth statement where you go what you own minus what you owe, when you don't owe anything, it really helps to increase your net worth and helps you build that faster. Now, in this stage, when we talk about first step toward millionaire status, getting out of debt, we're going to leave the mortgage off to the side. We're going to focus on consumer debt. So things like credit cards, auto loans, personal loans, medical debt, you name it, falls into this step. And you want to attack that aggressively. So that's that's kind of a big piece of it. And people, they fall for the traps and there's so much noise on social media and they're saying, well, the wealthy people, they leverage debt, Rachel, and they do this life insurance hack to have it. Don't, don't listen to those idiots. Yes, I know. So pay off your debt, smallest amount to largest amount, pay minimum payments on everything, stay current and get out of debt, have a thousand dollar emergency fund before you do that and start working your way out. And it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. And then once you do that, then you bump up that $1,000 emergency fund to three to six months of expenses. So you start to build out a liquid account, meaning you can get to that money when you need it. And this is another great thing that that helps you become a millionaire because you have money set aside. So if something happens, you're not going back into debt for things. You have your own money it's that like you're using. It's like a debt insurance yeah, where you're yeah. like, it's like I'm that never extra touching cushion it again. right there. Mm-hmm. That's good. So that's the next step toward millionaire status is to make savings a priority. Because when you don't have the savings, you don't have that cushion, life's going to come at you. And we yep. know it's going to happen. So be ready for it. Never go into debt again. Create that safety net for yourself. That's right. And then once that's done, then you start investing, which this is That's where fun. it gets exciting. Yeah. So. I always tell people, this is where you stop paying for the past and start building for the future. I, I just that. love that because- it's you move into a different mode. You're shifting yes, gears here. Totally. Yep. And you're funding 15% of your income into retirement. So we always say match beats Roth beats traditional. So if your company, you know, has a 5% match, go up to that 5%. So that means you have 10% of your income left to fund retirement. Go to your Roth, build that out. And if you're high rolling, making a great income and you max it out, go back to your 401k and max it out. So you're putting money towards the future. And this is really simple. People go, okay, what do I invest in? Because those accounts are just shells. The 401k is just an account. Uh, One thing to note here, it's important. People talk about 401ks and IRAs. You have to invest in something inside of that. And so we recommend growth stock mutual funds. This keeps it really simple to avoid having to go, what single stock should I get? And my buddy told me about this. We found that sticking with mutual funds and index funds kind of buying the entire stock market is way better than owning one piece of yeah, one company. individual stocks. Way less risky. So that will give people some peace. And be consistent. Yes. Don't do this like once mm-hmm. in a while. Do it every single month without fail once you're in baby step four and beyond. Yes. And Don't take it out. And I say this for the baby step sevens out there because there's some of y'all that are listening. Winston and I, we try to max out and fund our retirement early on in the year so it has the whole year to grow. Oh, yeah. So we've made that a goal the last couple of years. And... And it is so funny, though, because I'm like, I still, I'm such a spender. Because when I see that money go, future Rachel, she's going to be so thankful. She's going to be so happy that today Rachel did this. But it is so hard, George, when it's you see that money. It's delayed gratification. It is. And it feels like it just goes to a black hole. Yeah. You know the key for me, though? I picture, like, I just don't make as much money as I do. When you see the 15% go yeah. away, just learn to live on the lower number. Yes. So you just think, all right. And one day you're going to wake up and go, there's a huge pile of money in this nest egg. Someone's really smart. So that is a hard thing, though, to build that muscle over time to where you just sort of ignore that money. Don't look at it. Don't pull it out early. Don't touch it. Just let it ride. That's for future you. Let it ride. So that's a big one is just investing consistently once you're in that step. That's right. Love it, George. So good. Well, yeah, those things. And then, of course, paying off your house is in there as well. That's the next step to millionaire status. So, yeah. So this investing, your house, um. And then, you know, you can do things like your HSA, max it out later on down the road. So there's other things to do, but just don't get all crazy. And I think that's what happens. People get restless. They start putting their money towards stuff that's not proven. Yeah. Or they try to think they're like, oh, this is more sophisticated and it looks more complicated and complex. Therefore, it's better. It's not true. Simple. Simple. Yep. And just ride it. Ride it out and you'll be great. There it is. And you'll become a millionaire. And paying off your house, again, is really simple. Mm-hmm. You put extra toward the principal. Every month, as much as you can. Yes. 
You don't need to do some crazy mathematical hack or if you do this much extra, just put as much as you can extra while you're putting 15%, put some away for kids' college, and then put the rest toward the house yep. while still living your life. There's people, a balance here. And people doing this plan, they pay their houses off in what? Seven, seven years. Seven to eight years, I think, on average. And the millionaires amazing. we studied, the average was like 10.2 years. Yep. To have a uh, their house so, paid for. So great, you guys. We believe it's in exciting. You. We I'm believe excited for these you. people. Because if they're listening to this, it tells me they're going to be millionaires. Yes. They know too much now. Yes. Yeah. You're not gonna not be. Let's be honest. There we go. Yes. So if you made it this far, you have a paid for house that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. You've been investing into retirement mm-hmm. for years at fifteen percent. Yep. Which means you have probably hundreds of thousands of dollars there. Yep. You have some money in checking and savings in the emergency fund. You have some cars that are worth something. You add all of that up and all of a sudden you go, Oh my gosh, we're net worth millionaires. Yeah. That's that's all it is. Yep, that's right. That's the magic of it. And then you move on with your life and go to work and and the kid <laughs> spits going. up all over your outfit and you're like, uh, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's so good though. Love it. So those are the steps that Rachel and I took to get to net worth millionaire status. And we know for a fact they work. But yes. it's not going to be as fast as winning the grand prize on an iconic trivia game like John Carpenter did. I know. It's going to look different, right? Unless that's you, which— Nixon. You know, just always remember Nixon. That's the answer. At your next trivia night. That could be that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, so George, do you remember when you, like, made the milestone? I think I, I, think I do. Okay. I what want was to say, the day? so I started this plan in 2013. When I started yeah. at Ramsey, I went through Financial Peace University at $40,000 in debt. I became debt free before I married Whitney. Yeah. We got married. We had, I had some equity from our previous homes. We had some savings. We saved up on top of that, got the down payment on the, our town home, paid that off. And uh, so that happened. Once we added it all up, I think we hit, because this is collectively, not just me solo, but as yeah. a household, yeah, yeah, yeah. we hit net worth millionaire status by 2022. Okay. So that was under 10 years. Yes, that's so great. So and there was no schedule because there's no like, I want to do it this long, but right, it right, feels right, ahead of schedule. Cover. And it may take people longer. It may take 15 or 20 years. Yeah. I know. And I was thinking about it for us. And I'm like, I, for Winston and myself, like when I think about our our life and money, it's funny because I'm like, even having Dave Ramsey as my dad, having a net worth millionaire, like that was never a... We, we didn't talk about You guys about weren't it. sitting around at family meetings calculating your net worths no, together. No, and it wasn't even a thing that dad, like, we learned he wasn't money like, Rachel, as kids. He was like, you guys tracking this? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even that. Like, I didn't even learn how to do that or to do it. It was always like, are you budgeting? Living, you know what I mean? It was like it was these more about basics. The and maybe that's why I'm so passionate about, like, don't make it a goal. Because it was never a goal for me in Winston. And we bought a house during the recession. So I feel like we kind of got a jump. Like, we bought it yeah. from the bank at a short sale. So I feel like we were the opposite of what people are experiencing housing But as far wise. as like investments go, like that paid off as the housing market came back. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then our – yeah, so I'm like, I honestly, George, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like the certain date where you guys did a big celebration. I know because yeah. it wasn't a – like I feel like it wasn't a thing we were looking at. Does that make sense? It was yeah. more just, hey, what's our five-year goal? We want to build a house in that, And we did that. Like we had like these other goals Tangible that we were looking goals. at. And then I feel like it was like one of those things you look up and you're like, oh, my gosh. Wow, that's that's crazy. That's cool. You know, our house is worth what? When it was what in 09? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. like it was kind of that conversation. So And don't underestimate the power of the housing market and appreciation. Real estate. Oh my gosh. Well, and even our current, right? Like we we built and moved in in 19 and even what it is today. Oh yeah. Like that's what's crazy too. We're just like, wait, what? So yeah, that real estate game and that whole world is is legit. And if you can do it cash and let that be part of your investment strategy long term too. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's a, a huge part one. of your legacy too of what you end up leaving to your kids and the yep. way that can bless them financially yep. and that's huge. huge. Yeah, Love for it. sure. Love it. All right, George, it's almost the end of the episode and we close out every episode with guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer Lindsay gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we take a sip. So Lindsay, hit us with the truth. Okay. <laughs> it sounded cool in my head. Um, what, it wasn't. New, <laughs> what New Year's resolution are you guilty of giving up on the soonest? Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Mine's easy. It involves your body. Working out. Yeah. Fitness, <laughs> Rachel. Yeah. I would say that's probably mine, too. I'm great with other goals. I feel like I— Reading, I did a book one where I was like, I'm going to read 26 books this year. Didn't happen. Didn't oh. get to, no. Just didn't. You Rachel. could do twenty six. I could, but I didn't. I could probably do fifty push ups, but I don't. <laughs> but I don't. 
So that's the two that really stick out. Mine would be in the fitness out. or the eating healthy category for sure. Mm. I did a, I had a membership at Lifetime Fitness, which if you all know, that's like the bougie that's the gym. the fancy schmancy place, George. Yes. Well, my wife wanted to, so I was like, we'll both get a membership there. And I'll tell you, they have a steam room and sauna and hot tub. That's all you and see. that's what I ended up doing. And I was like, this is a really <laughs> expensive way to go to a sauna and steam room. Because I would go up to, like, the weight benches, and there'd be people who actually needed, like, this is their lifestyle. Yeah. Like, and I would just this. in their way. You know what I mean? And I didn't even know what I was doing. George, do you know? I just had this, like, picture. Do you follow the bride? Again, I, when, I, st- I still when, need to go uh, watch it. When Steve Martin is like, okay, okay. And he has the, wait, you've, wait. You have never seen Father of the Bride? Correct. Where would George I see it? freaking camel. What? I didn't see it in the movies. Missed it on VHS. Can't find it streaming oh, anywhere for free. My. And I refuse to it rent it. It is on Disney Plus now. It is? Yes. We watched it with my I, kids the other day. I'll need to log into your Disney Plus because I refuse you, to sign up. You will. Oh, I will give you my sign in because we gave you gave me. You gave us Tradesies. your sign in to watch Dumb and Dumber because George had never seen Dumb and Dumber. And Winston was like, you got to see right. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, George, Father of the Bride. Okay, anyways, there's a scene with Steve Martin. He's, like, having a midlife crisis, and he goes to the gym, and he just has just the bar. Oh, no and he barely up. can, and yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's a whole Been thing. Been there. <laughs> I even went with a buddy once. I was like, he'll show me the ropes. Rachel, left two you. hours later, we were done. And I was like, never again. <laughs> never again will it's I do this. It's a long workout. Not yeah. worth it. I'm not in that. I'm just like, you know what? You're I will a die a few years early. Hold on. You're a millionaire. You need to have someone come to your house and have a trainer and pay him weekly. To and do what? Like two to three. What are they going to do to me? And they'll bring weights, <laughs> and just like show know, me the ropes. Show you the ropes. Yeah. All right. There's my resolution, Rachel. I'm going to get. You should. Rachel inspired me to greatness. And you'll break today. it, but it's. Fine. But yeah, that's the one. How about you, producer Lindsay? Um, I think for me, I make too many. Oh yeah. Like I'm like over ambitious. Like so me- I, I have like categories of goals. Yeah, I Y'all do. Like multiple I had, goals in each category. I remember I looked back at an old journal. I think I had 30. And y'all like only half of them get done. Yeah, if so, that, if you're lucky. Yeah, so I don't know. Which I think I like my life too much. Man, y'all. Just be me, you know? Y'all are like major goal setters. Well, the power of not, not setting anymore, a goal. Not anymore, Rachel, because after I saw that, I'm like, what am I doing? Well, Rachel just... sets the bar so low, she can always step over it. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely am like, I'm great. I don't need to like. I love that for you. I you really know do. Just clip that. <laughs> clip Rachel just saying, "Genuinely, I'm great." <laughs> that sums her up. I just, yeah, yeah. It's not my thing, and I feel like there's been a backlash against New Year's resolutions. Do y'all feel like that? I feel mm-hmm. like don't set New Year's oh, resolutions. Yeah. Well, thanks to James Clear and Atomic Habits, it's is that been what like, it's resolutions from? are dumb? Create okay. habits. I'm like, all right, I can get behind that. Yeah, and I think that's wise. I think that's good. All oh, right, man. Well, next year, Rachel, look, you're gonna look back in 2025. We do the show. I, do, I will be I so ripped. Think. I will not fit into these shirts anymore. <laughs> of a whole new wardrobe. Hey, drink Winston's protein? gonna be texting me, being like, "Bro, drink drop creatine. the routine." Creatine, all of is it. that legal? That's what I. Yes, I take it. Creatine. I thought and that's what I got. You do, Rachel. Mm-hmm. I thought that's what got Mark McGuire legi- in hot water. I've legitimately been working. <laughs> no, what's creatine? I think those steroids. Isn't that Are like they not creatine the same holds thing? water weight it's and powder, helps like yeah. pro- yes. some of the protein? But I've been consistent since August. So I believe it will be still consistent. And you flexed for us that one time. And I was like, okay. No, I legit, I like did. legitimately, and you feel, and let me say this, George, I'm going to be like a mom. You just feel better. You really oh, do. Versus there's an and, Yes, there's something how you about look. like an energy and the creatine's good for your brain. Dr. John Zaloni talks about this. I didn't know. Yeah. It's a clear thing for your brain. You do protein. Like there's, there really is. It's like, it does. And then you get a sauna. I did get, I, well- Calling it a sauna is generous. Did you get a suit? She got one of those. My, my <laughs> wife got like one of these $130 Suits. weird boxes that you zip up. Yes, yes. And your hand sticks out and your head yes. pops out of the top. And yes, I, do it. It looks so dumb that I'm, I'm no scared to get it. in it. No one's going to see it. I haven't got in it yet. I'm too scared. I don't know. But I think all this is- Isn't I, it just like a heated blanket at that point? There's like, I know there's like hype around all the health stuff, like cold plunges and all that. We talked about this in the last episode, but yeah. I don't know. I do think it's great. There you go. Well- Guilty, Rachel's <laughs> innocent because she yeah, accomplishes all of the no goals, goals she doesn't set. <laughs> it's a 
It's feeling great. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Rachel, and you're missing a I lot. am missing a lot. Who needs goals when you have Rachel's life? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Have, a, have, a, have a, a money goal. Those are fun goals. Yeah. Everything I'll else? crush those all day long. Read, I don't need Read fitness. when you want. Work out when you want. You're fine. That was fun. Okay. Well, who, hey, uh, who? I think we're about equal. Maybe you're yeah. beating me by a smidge. A little bit. Little you're bit. very competitive in that way. I really liked the string, This George. was nice. This so this fun. was called a... Yeah. Royal. Oh my word. You're straining your neck Kill. as you say that. Kia. Kia Royal. Kia Royal. K I R, if you want to look it up. And this is a nice, very effervescent berry flavored drink mm-hmm. with champagne. Mm-hmm. Creme de cassis. Oh. Which is a black currant flavor and raspberries. Got to have the fresh, mm. glittered up raspberries I mean, to beautiful. garnish. Beautiful. I'm scared to eat this. That's a lot of glitter. Um, but it was a great drink, and it's only three forty nine per glass. So if you want to impress mm-hmm. your friends, mm-hmm. this is one worth making. What's your rating on it? I'm going to go 9 out of 10. Wow. Okay. I think I would order it like at brunch. Really? Like if there was like a brunch or something, and everyone was like, oh, yeah, let's do like a fun. Yeah, it's very And simple. I would enjoy it. Is it super sweet? It's not. It's very balanced, it's I would a ba- say. Yeah, it's a, it's a great drink. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go 9 out of 10 with you. What? Yeah. Amazing. It's not like my go-to, but I think for what it is. I feel like yours is an 8 out of 10. I don't know that I could improve much on it. You yeah. You know what I mean? The flavor is great. For a mm-hmm. champagne-based drink, I think this hits the mark, and I mm-hmm. like I like those dark berry flavors. So, There you go. You can get the recipe in the show notes. Give it a shot this weekend. Impress your friends. And uh, that's it, Rachel. It's closing time. I love it. Well... Make sure you guys to subscribe, share the show. It's always the best way to spread the word to your friends and family. We so appreciate it. We love reading the reviews. We love you guys. We really We are so excited about a new year. I just always feel like it's a fresh start. There is something so energizing about the new year you for put me. down the baggage and shame of last year and go to this year's gonna be yes, different it's like a it's just a clean slate and it's just i love it george and so, we're here to cheer you on to millionaire status to millionaire status y'all we believe in you regardless of where you are you can do this habits are more important than the milestone that's right remember that it's like an aunt rachel I feel like there was some kind of Miley Cyrus quote about the journey right here that we need to insert. But it's true. You You know, I was waiting for you to do your classic Rachel quote. (laughs) Your net worth is not your self-worth. Oh, I'll do that one How did you not weave that in? I was waiting. I didn't want to steal your thunder. I got to show you my favorite meme. This meme. (laughs) I know exactly what this is. Speaking of Miley. There's a French bulldog involved. Your net worth is not your self-worth. And then also... Usually the part that you remember, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's exactly what I was thinking of. <laughs> Wait, one more time. One more time. The journey is usually the part that you remember, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> is that a bridge? <laughs> <laughs> That's burned into my brain. It's just Miley, followed just by the French bulldog. <laughs> and with that, we bid you adieu if you're still somehow listening. <laughs> We'll see you next Thursday on an all new episode. What? <laughs> what? I tried to do Miley. Do Miley. <laughs> the journey. The journey. The journey's the part you're we'll see, ready. We'll see. <laughs> the journey's the part you're ready. I'll next time. <laughs> Is that really your best shot at that? Well, <laughs> Please continue. Hold on. I I'm hoping it, it gets it. better. I can do it better. Hold on. Give me like a, give me a tone or something. <laughs> the journey. The journey. <laughs> yeah, it's down there. Uh, that's just, uh, well, uh, well, 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 I can't do can it. Can you push against your throat? Well, that helps. Push against your throat. Uh, uh, the, journey's the, <laughs> the journey's the part. The journey's the part you remember anyways. <laughs> we'll see you Wait, next, that's, that's not we'll we'll see you next Thursday. <laughs> oh, no. All new episode. <laughs> We'll see you next. <laughs> we'll see you next Thursday. <laughs> we'll see. You. I'm gonna wrap this one. Oh my god! I got it! I got it! We'll see you next Thursday. Oh, I got it! 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 We'll see you it. next Thursday on a whole new episode. Nope, of- we gotta do that again. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next Thursday on an all, all new, new episode, episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. <laughs>